Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Andy and in today's video we're going to look at how to repair missing data. Missing data is a very common issue faced by many petrophysicists and data scientists. In my last video we looked at the excellent library called MissingNo to visualise and understand how missing data occurs within our data frames and how it relates to missing values within different columns. In today's video we're going to look at simple techniques to fill in missing values. The methods I'm going to show today are done using the pandas library. They are simple techniques to fill in the missing values. There are even more advanced techniques such as machine learning and other techniques to fill in those missing values, but we will cover them in a later video. So let's go over to a Jupyter Notebook and see how we can fill in those missing values. So the first thing we're going to do is import the libraries that we will be working with. Pandas will be the main library that we will use, whereas missing no will be used for a quick visualization of our data. As mentioned, I covered this library in my previous video, so go check it out if you want to see what it is capable of. The data set for this video will be a little different from the previous videos. I have essentially created a dummy CSV file with 20 rows and multiple columns. This way it is easier to illustrate each of the filling methods I am going to show you. So I'll load the file in and we can display the data frame. You can see here in the data frame that we have a depth value as the index, and then we have four columns of data, each with varying degrees of missingness. Curve C is complete and will be used for comparison between Curve C1. In the original CSV file, any missing values were represented by blank cells. When this is loaded through the read CSV function from pandas, these blank cells are converted to NAN values, and this stands for not a number. And this is the way that pandas and numpy represent missing values. In curve A, we have missing values at the top and at the bottom. In curve B, we have a few random NANs scattered through the data. In curve C1, we have four rows where we have continuous NANs and also a random one further down. Now this is easy to visualize in a data frame table with this data set, as we only have a small number of rows. But what if we had a hundred or even a thousand rows? We can use a number of tools and functions within pandas, most of which were discussed in my previous video. But for this video, I'm going to use the excellent library called MissingNo to create a matrix plot. And we call upon msno.matrix and then we pass in the data frame. And what a matrix plot does is it provides a graphical representation of the data frame. If values are present within our columns, we then have the plot shaded gray. And when data is absent, it is presented in white. Over on the right hand side, we have a spark line that indicates how many cells within the row contain values. If all values are present, it will be on the right hand side. If all the values are missing, then the spark line will move towards the left. If we want a count of how many nulls are present within our data frame, we can use df.isnull.sum. This will first check if a null value is present and then return true or false. And then it will count the number of trues within each column. Now if we want to see the rows within the data frame that contain the missing values, we can simply call upon the data frame using df and then square brackets and then pass in df.isNull and then dot any and then axis equals one to represent the column. And this is saying filter the data frame for rows that contain nulls in any of the columns. And what we get back here is a subset of the main data frame with only rows that contain a NAN value in any of the columns. So now that we have identified where the missing data is within our data frame, we can now move on to tackling it. The methods chosen for dealing with the missing will be dependent on the data you have and its intended purpose. A number of the methods can result in the skewing of the data and change the statistics of it. So it is always best to check the data afterwards to make sure you've not introduced any issues into it. So we will start with one of the most common ways to deal with missing values, and that is to drop them from the data frame. This is also known as listwise deletion. If one cell within a row contains a NAN value, then drop that row. And we can do this by calling upon df.dropna, and when we run this, we then return a data frame where each row is complete. Instead of dropping rows, we can drop columns from the data frame. And we can do that by df.dropna, and then we pass in axis is equal to one. And what we get back is the single curve, curve C, as all the other columns have NANs within them. And this is useful if you have one column that is badly affected by NANs or missing data. You can remove that column from that data frame 
simply by using the drop in a function. So instead of removing rows and data affected by missing values, we can fill in the gaps using a number of methods. We will start with a fixed value. The first one we will look at is filling in with a fixed value. This is done by typing in df.fillna and passing in a value. So here I've passed in a value of 1000 and we can see that the NAN values that were here previously have now been replaced by this fixed value. Now this is a method I personally wouldn't recommend as a value of 1000 may be a legitimate number and could, could be a way to generate false data. So I would be wary of using a fixed value for this. The next two methods we will look at are fill forward and fill backward. And this allows us to take a value from before the gap and pass it all the way forward until we come to the next data point, or we take the data point from after the gap and then we propagate that backwards to the next non-null value. And these again can be done by calling df.fillna and then we pass in a method argument and we for the forward fill we just pass in f fill. And we can see here that over the gap in curve C1, we can see we've got a 17.4 before that gap and that has been propagated forward until we get to the, to the end of the gap. And then we change to 22.6. Now you will see that we still have NANs within our data frame. And as there were no values before a depth of 100, then there's no values to propagate forward to cover these NANs. We can remove them by doing a fill backward. Again, df.fillna and then method is equal to bfill. So those NANs are now filled with a value of 145. But we still have the problem down the bottom where we don't have a value to propagate backwards from at a depth of 110. The next method we will look at is the interpolation method. And this is where we take the last non-null value before the gap and then draw a straight line from that towards the next non-null value after the gap. And we can do this by calling upon df.interpolate and then in the method argument we can pass in linear and we will do a linear interpolation between the two values either side of the gap. So you can see here we have the last value before the gap was 17.4 or drawing a linear line from that point up to 22.6 and the function will work out what values should go in here depending on the number of missing values it has to interpolate over. The final method that we will look at is one which is often discussed when filling in missing values, and that is using the mean of the data as a replacement value. This can have an impact on the distribution of the data, and it is recommended to check the data afterwards to make sure that you haven't uh, inadvertently skewed the data or introduced any bias into it. And again, we can do this just using the df.fillna method. And for the value argument, we then pass in df.mean. And what this will do is it will fill in the, the missing values with the mean from each of the columns. So we see here in curve C1, we've now filled with a value of 20.753 20 over the missing values. If we go to the df.describe method, we can see what the mean of that curve is before we did any replacements. And we can see that it is 20.753. And the same with the other columns, we've replaced the missing values within curve A and curve B with the mean of each of these columns. We have 47.4 here for column B, and we have a value of 68.705 for column A. The techniques shown here today are just simple methods that can be used to fill in those missing values. You should always check the data afterwards to ensure that you've not introduced any bias or skewed the data. If you want to see how to visualise missing data using the excellent Missing No library, then this video may be of interest to you up here. Or if you want to see how to use matplotlib to make a log plot, then this video down here may be of interest. But wait, don't click off this video just yet. If you've enjoyed this content and want to see more, be sure to click that subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to be notified when new videos are uploaded to this channel. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye for now.